Hey everyone, it's Sharon Devonish Lead, founder of Netstruck PR and the host of Netstruck Talks. And I'm excited today to have two guests that is going to be talking about the employee retention tax credit for small businesses. Now, this is an episode that I want as many small businesses to know about that if you have two to 500 employees, this is something that you definitely need to know about. Stay tuned and I'll see you in a few. Welcome. And I have two special guests here with me today. Um, you know, one is my namesake that I've known her for a very <laughs> long time, Sharon Davis. She is the founder and owner of SJ Edwards Company. And I also have Yvonne Forbes here. And they are going to be talking about the employee tax credit that small businesses, many small businesses, do not know about, or the ones that do know about it probably are not taking advantage of it because of a couple of rules that have changed. But mm -hmm. ladies, thank you so much for joining me on that Struck Talks. How are yes. you? We're great. Yes. Happy to be here. That's yes. great. That's great. So Sharon, we're going to just jump right into this. Talk mm -hmm. to us about what is the employee retention tax credit and how, how, who is it for? Okay. Well, when the pandemic started, um, the government wanted to do something for small businesses because they were all impacted negatively by the pandemic. We all know that they had to modify their operations. They had to go out of business. So they, they, the CARES Act was signed into law in 2020. And what that did was it allowed them to um, apply for funds like the PPP and the EIDL, that type of program, and the ERC. It was around at that time. That's called the Employee Retention Tax Credit. And what they wanted to do was to reward employers for keeping their payroll going. So they had that, um, it, it was about $400 billion in assets that were available. But because it was a little restrictive at that time, a lot of people did not apply for it because they would apply for the PPP, which was a little more accessible. Now the laws have changed. They've amended it several times and it is available to anyone who has at least two W-2 employees and was impacted by the uh, pandemic or had a decline in their income. So it's, it's a little more, a little less restrictive. So a lot of clients are now starting to apply for it. However, when I spoke to Yvonne, who was my friend for many years, she was telling me about what she was doing for her clients. And I couldn't believe it. I, did, I said, oh, this is too good to be true, which is what everybody's saying now. So she said, well, Google it and YouTube it. So I did that. And there was information out there about that. So I called some of my clients, about 11, and I said, have you applied yet? Did you hear about it? And only two of them had applied. The others had no clue. So wow. I was concerned about that because they were smaller employees. The ones that knew about it were dealing with high-end CPA firms and attorneys. So they were on top mm -hmm. of their game. The, the little guy was being left out. So right. you know me, Sharon. When I get passionate about something, it's all Absolutely. On. Absolutely. <laughs> so, and, 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 and you said it, you hit it on the nose. You know, you get passionate because the small businesses are always the last ones to get the information, to grab absolutely. the bag, I should say. And- yeah. You know, it, it's something where so does it so the when when the rules changed, um, was there notification sent out? Was there anything or or how is it that they can actually find out about it? Um, you know, it, it because if they don't have a CPA that they're working with or you know, or they're you know close to working with it, you know, what are some of the things that some people can do, some small businesses can do? Well, they can go to information. Are you asking what they can do if they want to find out about it? Well, yeah, you know, to get more information. Obviously, Sharon, you know, you have an event that's coming up and we're going to talk about that. But mm -hmm. let's say for those who don't, you know, should they reach out to you? Is there something that they can do on their own? What is it that we can actually get the information out to small businesses so they can learn about this and, you know, possibly apply? 
we just know they're eligible. Sometimes, um, you know, they can inquire from their um, payroll companies. The reason what makes us different in assisting them is we bring audit protection to the table. So if you get the PPP, people don't realize that um, the government can come several years from now and audit you on getting the PPP. So on the employee retention tax credit, the team, the team the, that we have in place allows the client to have this level of protection as it, as it pertains to peace of mind, knowing that if IRS comes and asks any questions, somebody in the back end knows what they're doing, will, um, you know, um, go to bat for them, simply put. But um, I honestly, in terms of knowing about it, they honestly will have to, to research it. A lot of CPAs uh, know something about it, but they are, um, you know, there's 17,000 tax codes that they have to keep up with, and this is very specialized. And so we encourage folks to reach out to us. Um, you know, we have, we have a, a you know, team of about 20 people that collects the data. Um, then we partner with Tax Strategy Pro that has the, their old team that back us up so that the clients, we're, we have the support in place to assist these clients. And so I think at some point you'll share Sharon's information and they'll know they have that information. We can at least answer questions for them. Right. And again, two employees to 500, like you stated earlier. Now, let me ask you a question. And, and I had sent this to Sharon, um, I, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. Um, I, the, the number of the businesses, what is the cap number? for businesses that can actually see if they can take advantage of this tax credit? I say to the client, if you have over 500 employees, um, then, you know, you can't, we can take a look at it because we're going to look at, we're going to want the number of employees from, from 2019, 2020, and 2021. So I said, if you are kind of on the border, teetering on the border of 500 employees, we encourage you to let us look at it because the analysis is free. But if you've been riding high over 500 employees since 2019, you're not um, going to be able to get the funds because this was established. This trillion dollars that they that they put away in a bucket is to support those small businesses that kept their employees on payroll, even though they were impacted by COVID, whether it's dropping revenue or they had to fully shut down or partially shut down, kept employees on payroll. This is to help those employers. So I don't think when they designated the funds, they wanted it for companies, you know, over um, 500 employees. There may be programs for them. And I want to say what we say to those clients is there are credits available to you you can just talk to us so we can tell you what you'll qualify for. Right. Because yeah. some companies, if they're pretty profitable and um, but their you know, salaries are low and they don't have a lot of employees, employee retention tax credit may not be for them. Um, the conversation here is employee tax credit, but we have other solutions mm -hmm. because tax strategy is our goal. How can we help small businesses? get access to cash, but, but also save, you know, taxes over their business years, like the big folks do, the big shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And Sharon, I, you wanted to tap in, you wanted to say something? No, I was going to say that initially they were limited to a hundred employees. And then when they amended it and made it more accessible, now mm -hmm. the maximum is 500 employees. Okay. So that's now, another reason. Mm -hmm. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's another reason why this is really, they want a small employer, but they didn't take advantage of it because they didn't know it. So now um, they, they have to have a minimum of 500 employees. I mean, a maximum of 500. Maximum of 500. Mm -hmm. So let, let me ask you another question. And you mentioned it, you know, before, and I just want people to be, you know, have clarity on what gives them what makes them so-called eligible, at least to make a call to you to say that I'm, I want an assessment? 
um, for this tax credit? You know, what what is the criteria? I know you said that, you know, they had to be affected by COVID. Um, you know, they were shut down. They have W-2. To give us all of what you can for people to actually know to say, OK, you know what? I need to call Sharon. I need to call Yvonne. I need I, I need an assessment. So the baseline rule is you must must be W-2 employees, can't be 1099. So the first thing is, how many employees do you have? Do you have at least two employees? Number That's number one. Number two um, is, were you impacted by COVID, whether it's partial or fully shut down? Uh, did you have a drop in revenue or did you have a drop in revenue? Because it's, you know, clients have disqualified themselves because they're like, well, we read that, you know, we made a lot of money this year, so we don't qualify. It's either or. You either have a loss in revenue or you were fully or partially shut down because of COVID. You know, COVID, you have to modify your business because of COVID. So those are the basic criteria. I also say to clients, we release a survey and within 24 hours, we can give them a first look to say, okay, from a numbers perspective, we can tell you if you'll pre-qualify. And then when we get the documentation in and do a deep dive, then you really know, um, do I qualify? Mm -hmm. um, it entails an interview, a checklist of documents we'll need, but the first step is you complete the survey and you'll know within a 24 hours. Do I qualify from a numbers perspective before we even do the deep, deep dive into it? But to answer your questions, two employees must be W-2. Um, have you had a loss in revenue? Did you have to modify your business or did you have to shut down? Okay, great, great. And I know, Sharon, you have an event coming up on Friday on um, May 13th. Yeah. And it's about the tax retention um, tax credit the employee retention tax credit. Talk to us, what's going to happen at this event? And how is it folks that are in the New York area, that I want to say tri-state area, um, how can they get an opportunity to attend this? Um, you know, do they need to bring any documents with them? You know, what, what entails for this um, presentation that you're doing on Friday? Well, uh, Yvonne and I are sponsoring a free, it's just a light lunch and a seminar. And the purpose is to just inform people about the program and help them navigate through the process because it is cumbersome. And that's the reason a lot of people also don't apply because they start looking at the paperwork required and survey, they get nervous. But um, we're just informing them about it. We, if we have 40 people in the room, we're encouraging them to go out and tell two other business owners about it. So it's really an overview of the program and uh, directions on how to apply and see if you qualify. And there's no cost to see if you qualify. You just, as, as Yvonne said, you fill out the survey, they send it in and within 24 hours, and I'm in shock too, because I started sending them in and my clients started getting them back and they are qualifying for substantial amounts of money. That's why I'm very excited. We're really helping the community that's underserved. Right. And where is it gonna be held on Friday? It's going to be held at the Four Points Sheridan. Where will it be held? The Four Points Sheridan in Plainview. That's 333 South Service Road, Plainview, New York. Um, there is limited seating, so I'm hoping that if anybody wants to come, they will RSVP because I did hear of a couple of people that said, oh, I'm just coming. I, I, don't, I can't guarantee you're going to get your sandwich and your snack if you just show up. So I'd like people to RSVP. They can go onto my website and go into the employee retention credit tab and scroll down to, I would like to attend the free event and then they could just send their information. Or even easier, if they wanna do it the old fashioned way, they can call my office, 516-208-9988. Okay, and um, give us your website that folks give, the, the tech savvy folks. <laughs> www.sjedwards.com Dot com. Very simple. Okay. www.sjedwards.com. And again, this, this seminar is going to be held this Friday, May 13th at 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. And for those who want to attend, you must RSVP. If you are in the tri-state mm -hmm. area, it will be held in the Long Island, Plainview area. You must RSVP to 
SJ Edwards at dot com, SJ Edwards dot com and go to the tab employee retention tax credit and you will be able to RSVP or you can also do do the the, the regular the way that everybody used to know before technology, the telephone call mm -hmm. 516 208 nine nine eight eight and you will get someone at sharon's office and they will be glad to take your rsvp i encourage small businesses who have a w2 who have employees with two or more up to 500 with w2s to please take this into consideration i find that we as small businesses do not go for the things that is really owed to us and that's why when Sharon called, when Sharon, when you called me, I said, absolutely. I already started sending text messages out to folks yes. and to, you know, to, to jump on this into RSVP. And I felt that it was very important for us to have this conversation, to let other people know, even after the 13th, that they can still get in contact with you. So I'm going to definitely put this in the comment box, your contact information where folks will be able to reach out to you and learn more about it if they cannot make the event on Friday. Ladies, do you have anything else that you would like to add before we go? I so do. Just two, one, thing that, yeah. one thing I'd like to add is people hear credit and they're like, oh, a credit, it's a re, you know, it is a refundable check that they're going to get. And, and for 2021, it's up to $19,000 per employee. That's key. I mean, we're talking big dollars if your payroll is big. So, mm -hmm. and it ends the end of the year. They have until the end of the year to get their apps in, to get their paper, their amended documents in. That is really key. This is why we're doing a marathon to get the word out. Yeah. And that's what I was going to mention. The deadline for filing is December 31st, 2022. And the way the years are flying, by the time we blink, we'll be at the end of the year. So they really need to get started at least doing the survey, see what they qualify for. It costs them nothing to do that. But we really want to help these businesses stimulate the economy and hire more employees. That's, man, that's very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you again. Once again, if you cannot make the event or if you want to RSVP, please go to Sharon's website, which is sjedwards.com, or you can give the phone call. You can call her at 516-208-9988. Ladies, thank you so much. I will see you, you guys on Friday. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for watching another episode of Netstruck Talks, and I will see you at the next episode. Take care. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.